Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the Lord be with you this Invocavit Sunday. Uh, the, the Lord calls Sunday. So uh, the order of service is divine service setting three. A couple announcements I just saw in the, in the bulletin. There's a little bit of a typo or at least a, an editing issue here, uh, rearranging things. So after the, uh, epistle, after the Old Testament lesson, we will have the gradual. But you will see on the front cover there's a tract. That actually belongs after the epistle. So, so don't sing that after the intro. That won't, that won't be the right place. So, so in lieu of the Alleluia, in place of the Alleluia during this season of Lent, the tract will be said. And we'll use the same tones that we use for the intro and the gradual, uh, but we will do that right after the epistle. So we'll stand and do the, the tract together as we would the gradual. Um, Again, reminders, during this season of Lent, we forego the Alleluias and the Gloria and Excelsius, so those are omitted, um, but everything else is as usual. So we begin with our bells, uh, introducing our opening hymn, and, which is 433. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. 
but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, because you have made the glory of the dwell place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament for Invocavit is written in the first book of Moses, commonly called Genesis, the first, the third chapter. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of the, any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, 
You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some, of, some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from their, the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field, on your belly you shall go, dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's, wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. The epistle is written in St. Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, the sixth chapter. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love. By truthful speech and the power of God, 
with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, and having nothing, as having nothing yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the tract. We stand. Sorry. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with His pinions, and under His wings you will find refuge. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory be to Thee, O Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Oh, sorry, we already did that. I won't get that. All right. Jesus said, or then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We cannot forget the day it all blew up. The fruit was such a delight to the eyes, that it would satiate their empty stomachs and make them wise to boot, or at least that's what they imagined. We cannot forget the day of all of ours fall into sin. It is the day we... The day man destroyed everything. It is the day we went from thinking about God and each other to exclusively thinking about ourselves in all things. We went from loving God and neighbor to loving ourselves only. This we cannot forget. Because it is the only reason why our existence is as it is today. All the pain and suffering, all the chaos and confusion in this world, in our homes and in our heads, is because of that day. We cannot forget the day. That is why it is mentioned and referenced in so many sermons. It is the, course, it is the source of all sin and death. And it is so much a part of who we are that it is so easy to connect with, even in our given situation. There is nothing new under the sun. It all started with Adam and Eve in the garden. Now the lie was simple. It was the opposite of everything God had said and done. You won't die. You will be like God. All lies. Nothing said by the serpent was true, yet they believed it anyway. They turned from the truth to the lie. And when it was immediately realized that it was a lie, it was too late. They could not go back. All was broken. Now there is an answer. There was an answer to their dilemma. And it's the same answer for us. And that is to repent. To turn to God for help. But our first parents didn't do that, did they? With the venom of the serpent coursing through their veins... Through their souls, they lied too. They concealed their rebellion with a lie, and more than that, lies on top of lies. It wasn't true that they became more like God, because the irony is that they were already like God, created in His image. But now they had destroyed that, and instead of acknowledging the fact that they were now dead and broken, they faked it. They clumsily made use, made use of what God had created. And they used it wrongly. They used creation to conceal their naked shame. They didn't use it as God had intended. They were to eat the herb of the field, not wear it to cover up their nakedness. No, that now they pretended that they were like God. And so they made their own reality. They created, as it were. They ran from what was real and hid from God. They worked hard to convince themselves that they were not dead, or at least they tried to believe that they could then save themselves. But it didn't work. It didn't work because it wasn't real. It was a lie. What they did is exactly what we do when we are exposed in our sins. When God's word, his voice, enters our lives, we are not inclined to embrace reality. We would rather fly or fight. We hide behind whatever we make from the creation that is around us. We use our reason and our senses to create what we believe to be wisdom, but in all truth is foolishness. We separate ourselves from God. We don't get closer. We separate ourselves from His Word and we replace it with lies. Lies of the world, lies of the devil, even lies of our own making. For we think we know better. And so we fill our stomachs with all sorts of things thinking it will conceal even a little bit the pain, the suffering, the humiliating nakedness. 
food and drink, pills and poison, all consumed to numb our conscience. We see with our eyes the glory of others' assumed lives. And we make up a reality of our own, a life of intimacy without actual connection. We have affairs over the Internet, imagining, creating from what God has made, using it in perverse ways. We covet in our hearts, which then makes God after God. God after God in our own image. Now that we know evil, we believe it to be good. What is lost for Adam and Eve, which is lost for us too, is the one thing that saves. It is the very thing that created everything. It is the very thing that was promised, which was planted as a seed in the virgin's womb and assumed flesh and blood. Though they never asked for it, though they never sought it, God in true, real love provided it. The Word. The Word. The Word. The way, the truth, and the life were promised to Adam and Eve that day of their fall. And it was promised to every one of their heirs, to you and to me. For it is Jesus Christ who is the Word made flesh. Just like in the garden, God, moved by, moved by eternal love, entered man's mess, our mess. He condescends into the rubble of the fall and saves it. He doesn't condemn it. He doesn't sweep it clean and start over. He redeems us. He redeems creation. He buys us back. He pays the price we ought to have owed. For the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. But we don't die. We don't die because God, in His wisdom and His love, takes our place. He takes our place in every way. And so it starts. It started at the beginning with the promise. But then it came to realiza- real reality. Into, it was realized in Jesus' conception by the word of the angel Gabriel to Mary. By that word, the promise is kept. It all started at Jesus' conception, but all along the way of his life, he is recommitted to the task, not for his sake, but for ours. For he never forgot who he was and why he came. We always need remembering, reminding. We not need to con- be constantly and continuously reminded of who he is for us. Because left to our own devices, we run to fig leaves and trees. No, the word of God is given. The Word of God is reminded us from above like a voice calling out to us, Where are you? He reaches into our illusions and pulls us into His reality. He reminds us what He has said and done. He reminds us who He is and where He is for us. He says, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus, immediately prior to today's Gospel reading, emerges from the waters of the Jordan. Those waters are now made holy along with all baptismal waters because He went into them. He there enters the common water with all His divine righteousness and holiness. But He departs from the banks of of the Jordan with all man's wretchedness to which the voice of the Father then from heaven declares, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. For what Jesus did in those holy waters was not for His sake, but for ours. His well-pleasing work was His christening, His furthering, His further assumption of our sin, and the work of being our Savior. By those waters, he now becomes our scapegoat. 
He is like the scapegoat on the Day of Atonement, the Yom Kippur. There, Jesus is led by the Holy Spirit, not into the Garden of Life, but the wilderness of sin. Instead of a land giving up its strength, it would take and suck the life from God, from Jesus. Forty days and forty nights, not a morsel of manna, not a drop of rain. He was man, as he should be because of his sin. It's what man wanted in the fall. For Jesus, for a time, was without God's temporal provision. Yes, he was spared death. Yeah, that is true. He was spared death at that time by the exercise of his divinity, but only in this case in order to prolong his suffering for our sins. He is the one who pays the price for our fall into sin. He suffers and eventually will die. He is doing what no man could do because of sin. He is doing it all for men, for you, for me. When the time was up, and the devil, then it is then that the devil strikes. He supposed that at that point the flesh was to be weak, weak enough for an attack. Jesus was indeed hungry. Men had buckled before for a piece of fruit, a bowl of soup, a drink of water from a rock. The thought was that Jesus would do the same, especially after 40, day, 40 long days and nights. Oh, how the devil was wrong. Jesus is no mere man. He fasts on purpose and he breaks his fast on purpose, precisely when he means to. He is self-controlled. His hunger is not in charge. Therefore, the devil has no power. Nevertheless, he tries. He tries to tempt Jesus. Tries to get Jesus to think of himself. To take rocks and make bread for himself. But that is not his nature. That is fallen men's nature. Jesus is not about to serve himself, for he has come to, for, man, for man's sake, for their salvation, not his own. So Jesus, in reply to the devil, rebukes him. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Notice where Jesus goes for strength and sustenance. He goes where Adam and Eve didn't go. He goes to the Word of God, to what God actually said. And it silences the lie. And the devil is left to try another way. With his stomach still rumbling, the devil brings Jesus up to the top of the temple and challenges him on how well he knows the Word. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. This is a, a trick, of course. It is in the vein of, what did God actually say? To men, this attack works so well, but not on Jesus. He knows all the scriptures because he is the scriptures. He knows what he said, and he knows what he meant when he said it. He knows the context. Therefore, even when the devil quotes the Bible out of context, Jesus is not duped. Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. God said, what the devil did quote. But God said it to create faith, to sustain it, not in order for man to use it to manipulate God. For God does not need to prove himself to us men. We are simply to receive what he gives, to believe it, based on what he has already done. Now, repelled by Jesus yet a second time, the evil foe tried one last time. He took Jesus to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. 
He out and out lies to Jesus. The devil is appealing to man's selfishness and his aversion to any and all pain and suffering. Looking at other men and what they have is an easy distraction and temptation when presented to fallen men. The cares, riches, and pleasures of this world, of this life, seem like the choicest of fig leaves as compared to the potential nip of cold or worse, the humiliating exposure of complete nakedness, hanging, nailed to the cross as a common criminal for men who either put him there or abandoned him in his hour of greatest need. Who wants to do that? In other words, do you really want to go through all of that for those who hate you? who don't love you, just give up and get some greener grass. The lie is that the devil can, prom- can't, the lie is that the devil can promise this stuff. He can't. He is not God. He has nothing to give. He only takes and destroys. There is, there are no kingdoms in great glory. There are no greener grasses. There are no lives without suffering. In fact, there is only greater pain, greater suffering, greater terror in such false promises. So do not believe the devil. Do not trust him. Do not worship him. For to fear, love, and trust in him is to worship him. That is where mom and dad went wrong. They followed him. The age of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil. But Jesus didn't. Jesus is the greater Adam. He is the one who is faithful to the end. He hears the word of God, he believes the word of God, and he keeps it. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Jesus worshipped God perfectly in our place. He feared, loved, and trusted in God Always. Where Adam and Eve doubted and abandoned God and His Word, Jesus held fast and got closer, not farther away. For there was no greater comfort than that. There was nothing more real than what He had in His Father. When you are attacked, which you are attacked daily, you will do well to learn from our Lord. But first, you must receive what He already did for you and all men. You must, in faith given to you, receive it as your own. Because Jesus did not go into the wilderness for Himself, He did it for you. He went for you. He takes your failures, your fall into sin, your daily sin, and He takes it unto Himself and then overcomes your sin there in the wilderness, there in His entire life. For you. He forgives you in the end by his own work. He washes away all your sins, and like in the garden, he clothes you with heavenly, bloody robes of his righteousness, his sacrifice, his love. You are now better off than your first parents. You have now Jesus' bloody sacrifice covering all that brings you great shame and embarrassment. Everything you were too weak to resist and to overcome, He did it for you. He did it for you and has now given to you what you do not deserve. By His grace, He gives you His own righteousness. For you are His dearly beloved, baptized children. Believe it. You are not alone. When Satan finally buggers off, Jesus is no longer found alone there in the wilderness. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Jesus was finally served by God, his Father, at the proper time. Jesus never reached out his hand to take. He instead receives from the angels. He receives from the angels, the messengers of God, comfort. They comfort him and bound up his wounds. 
But an angel only has one tool for service. His voice. He is first and foremost a messenger. So the angels came and ministered to him and fortified Jesus with the very thing that fed him and sustained him there in the wilderness as he endured the onslaught of the evil foe. Dear saints of St. John's, you too have angels to minister unto you in the midst of your battles. Unfortunately, I don't look so angelic. Yet, yes, as it is, God has a sick sense of humor. But all pastors are angels, as it were. All pastors are first and foremost messengers of God. Angels who speak the good news. They minister to you. They strengthen you for the fight. And they bind up your wounds in the midst of the battle. They forgive you all your sins. And they give you sustenance. They give you food from heaven to strengthen your faith, to endure. They remind you that you are not alone in your suffering. Jesus is with you, and He has overcome all, and He is one. He is victorious. His body and blood, though not in that wilderness, was eventually finished unto death on the cross outside of Jerusalem. There the fangs of the serpent sank deep. He attempts to swallow whole the Lamb of God, but His lying jaw is shattered instead. His head is forever crushed. And that we need to believe. Believe it. For the Word of God, the truth, has set you free. And if you are free in the truth, free you are. Never forget the fall into sin. Never forget why there is pain and suffering in this world. But also, and more importantly, remember what God has done to address once and for all our sin death and the devil. He has in perfect love given everything for you. He took nothing and he still takes nothing. He only gives. So receive him, his word, his water, his bread, his body for bread, his blood for wine. Be regaled by his messengers and their gospel of the Lord's and the gospel of the Lord's glorious victory. His crucifixion and his resurrection from the dead. For that is your glory now, and it is no lie. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. (coughs) Create in me a clean heart. to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen.
We stand for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we rejoice with Cheryl Krieger, who has returned home following uh, cancer surgery. Uh, she's doing well and recovering at home. We also continue to pray for Liliana Lauer, a friend, uh, our granddaughter uh, to a friend of David Racer's, uh, who has also returned home. Uh, she had abdominal surgery. She is two months old. We also continue to pray for David Rathke, receiving cancer treatment, and Nilsa Tremaine, uh, receiving treatment following a stroke, and Sandy Mollick, uh, uh, Jill Caker's sister, who is now in rehab following uh, a stay in the hospital. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Most High, you are the dwelling place of your people. For the sake of Jesus, who suffered temptation and death for our redemption, be our refuge. Preserve us from every evil and plague, and strengthen us in faith that we might be satisfied with your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, the first Adam stood idly by as Eve was tempted in the garden. The last Adam, your son, Jesus Christ, endured the taunts of the devil and overcame him in the wilderness, emboldened those called to serve in your name, to stand against Satan with the weapons of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, preserve all catechumens and their teachers, all children and their parents, and every Christian home from the assaults of the evil one. As, they, as your son overcame Satan in the desert by the word of God, so also give us the victory through Christ and his word, through your, uh, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, though we marvel at our own perceived power, your might surpasses all the might of man. Do not let positions of authority or influence be used toward violent and wicked ends. Give us, or bless us, with wise and faithful leaders who will persevere, preserve our freedom and promote its use for noble purposes. Guide all legislatures, judges, and authorities in our nation, state, and city. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, though we deserve nothing of your kindness, you have shown yourself to be the strength of the weak, the healer of the sick, and the hope of those who mourn. Hear us on behalf of those who are troubled in mind and body, the dying and those who grieve, especially Liliana Lauer, Cheryl Krieger, David Rathke, Nilsa Tremaine, Sandy Mollick, and all those whom we now name in our hearts. Sustain them through their afflictions and pain. Heal them according to your gracious will and deliver them at the last to everlasting life in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, the fall of Adam closed the way to the tree of life, but the death of Christ on the tree of the cross has opened to us the way of everlasting life. Give us the fruit of his cross. Your forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, see how the adversary continually afflicts us and walks about as a roaring lion, seeking to devour us. We implore you for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, to help us by the grace of the Holy Spirit and to strengthen our hearts by your word, that our enemy would not prevail over us, but instead that we may abide evermore in your grace and be preserved to life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is 
is meet and right, so to do. It is truly good, right, and sound, you who tarry, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to who you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, the body of Christ give it for you. Blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and life to come. Through fathers and God's peace, your sins are forgiven.
Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, from this life and life to come. Be far to God's peace, your sins are forgiven. the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, throughout this life and the life to come. Be 
sight, you are in God's peace, your sins are forgiven. the two bodies. Oh, my. 
Thine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
You may be seated. The Lord's blessings to you this morning. You guys are troopers. I didn't realize it was that long of a hymn. Uh, and, and you guys were buried in your hymnal, so I tried to get you to sit down. But uh, that's good. Uh, thank you for that. I will mark that for next year. So um, uh, it would be a great communion hymn, but uh, not a closing one. Uh, so uh, the Lord's blessings to you again this morning. Uh, uh, one big announcement for this morning, immediately following the divine service, we'll give you got about five minutes. We'll have a special voters meeting. Uh, we have to do some uh, uh, unvoting to, and then voting. So uh, we have to uh, reverse course on our involvement in the now defunct school association and then um, have a discussion and um, decision on whether or not we as St. John's will continue on our own uh, in uh, establishing the classical Lutheran school here uh, in Port Washington. So. Uh, if you are a voter, please stick around. Even if you're not, if you want to have some uh, information given to you and then uh, have some discussion, we are, we'll be glad to entertain that at that time. Uh, this will be a kind of a, a two-in-one. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, we, you've done this in the past. You'll have your information meeting, and then you'll like stand up, turn around, and then sit down and have a different meeting. Uh, that's when we'll vote as to whether or not to, to move forward. At least that's what Tom, Tim told me. So... Right? Do you have to do a hokey pokey or something in between the informational meeting and the voters meeting? No? Okay. I'm, just, I'm making stuff up, okay? Come on, laugh. It's, it's supposed to be funny. All right, all right, all right, all right, all um, right. And so we'll have that if there is time, depending on how long that goes. There will be, I am prepared for, for Bible study. Uh, Sunday school will still go on. Uh, so if you have your little ones that are in Sunday school, um, uh, uh, Logan and Macy are, are taking that this morning, right? Good. I saw, I saw you guys making a, a copy, so um, uh, you might just take them right away. Uh, so right after, no opening this morning. So, all right. Um, with Lent, uh, we continue our, our journey through the season of Lent midweek. Uh, we have 3 o'clock service and a 7 o'clock service. Both services are the same. Uh, we will be going through the penitential psalms and God's gift of forgiveness. Uh, as found in Confession and Absolution. Uh, one thing that I, I, I said this on Wednesday, but then I forgot to give it to Lorraine on Thursday, uh, is that from, uh, from the end of the service at 3 o'clock, or the 3 o'clock service, the end of that, about 4 o'clock, till about 4.45, I will be available and sitting for private Confession and Absolution, if you so wish to uh, partake of that, uh, that freeing gift. Um, not a you, of course, you are not required to do that, but it is uh, something I encourage you to partake of as we uh, feel the comfort of God's grace uh, as we receive that uh, in the words of absolution, uh, even privately, to have your name, your sins uh, forgiven by name uh, and your name forgiven as well. So um, that is from about 4 o'clock to 4.15. I will be here. At 5 o'clock I have catechesis, so um, uh, I will not be there. But that is going to be available uh, for uh, the next five weeks, the week of uh, Holy Week. Uh, certainly by appointment, but that Wednesday, there is no Wednesday service. There will be service at, on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and of course, Easter morning. So, um, are there any questions about that? All right. There is? Let me know. Oh, we love that sound. It's great. It's good. Uh, we love the, the sound of little ones in the church. So, all right. So, the Lord's blessings, and may he keep you safe in the palm of his, uh, palm of his hands uh, until we meet again. God bless. And we will meet here in about five minutes for our meeting. God's peace.